Hello, this is Julia Whitup with Talk Story TV, and today, hi, Sharia. We have with us Sharia Fox, who is going to be talking to us about navigating the multiverse. So, Sharia, what is the multiverse? I mean, Sharia, I'm sorry I'm pronouncing it. Oh, you got it right. Thank you very much. Yes, Sharia, like a ray of sunshine, I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> So starting out, yeah, what is the multiverse? That's a great question. And who am I to be talking about it, I guess, is another <laughs> important thing people might want to know. But um, the multiverse is basically the multiples of universes that we have in this phenomenal reality um, that we call creation. And so we've heard of the universe, nav navigating the universe and you know, thinking about ourselves in something more than just a planet, more than a solar system, more than a galaxy. There's a whole, um, you know, numbers of galaxies in this universe. And so then the multiverse is, is the other universes. <laughs> numbers of and, universes. Yeah. yeah. So there are some movies that demonstrate this. I'm trying to think of the sci-fi movie. Is it like Men in Black, I think? Where they oh. show the, the little marbles. They all the little marbles to get, you know, that oh, are and there's whole little worlds inside of them. Yeah. So yeah. that's what it looks like when I look at the multiverse. Okay. Like somebody's channeling something. <laughs> wow. So I saw that and I'm like, oh yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like little spherical bubbles that, and like, if you're outside of the universes and you're in the Godhead, let's say, or you're in the original creation beyond any phenomenal reality and you're looking you know out into space to see all the universes you know from that level of ability you could dive in to anyone that you might want to go and see what was going on in, in there <laughs> and, you know but in our journeys as human beings and creatures and souls we are we kind of get entrapped or or unraveled or entangled in one or more universe and think really identify with it and we don't necessarily know that there's more going on and we certainly don't remember ourselves at that level of maybe even navigating the multiverse or even building a universe for example yeah. right but but at those higher levels you know that's who we are at those different octaves of our multi-dimensional holographic self our avatar our our being you know our larger spiritual being with multiples of bodies and dimensions um we have done all kinds of things like building building galaxies or universes or planets and things like that different people have different roles you know different souls different roles <laughs> i was shocked when i found out that i was living a whole entire another life when i'm asleep <laughs> yeah exactly we we are multi-dimensional holographic beings that the way that the divine mother describes it in my next book that's coming out it's going to be called codes of union divine mother speaks she's actually given us some diagrams to understand these universal energy flows and she makes a distinction between spirit and soul in this one for the purpose of comprehension basically and so if you think about the original source being this whole thing and then Divine Mother and Divine Father birthing out of that to create a polar unity. When you separate the yin and the yang, now you create an engine, a turbine, because it starts flipping and spinning. Mm -hmm. So when you flip and spin, you have electricity, electromagnetism that occurs. And so the sparks that fly off of their flipping turbine energy, which you could also call likened to lovemaking, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cosmic you know, toss under the covers here. <laughs> um, <laughs> now they're shooting off sparks of light, which is us, which is a unique individuated aspect of spirit that now is poised to go out and have experiences in the multiverse and, um, and, and maybe even create the multiverse and create, you know, back at the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that original spark of spirit, the way it's explained to me is at one atoned, right? It's at one with the original source creator. Absolutely. That's where it came from. That's all there is. And, and it's also at one with divine mother and divine father who birthed it as an emanation of themselves. And yet it also has unique codes to it, which we can access to really fully begin to live our purpose. But what happens is 
as a little spark of spirit. Now we're going off in incarnation and incarnation and hopping around the multiverse and maybe in multiple timelines as a source streaming human angel, you know, as this being that's going out, mm -hmm. having all these experiences. And now we're getting muddied up with what we call soul. We're getting, we're, we're getting, we're, we're learning skills. We're gaining preferences. We're having traumas. We're having really great experiences that we want to repeat. We're, 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 we're accessing wisdom and intelligence in certain ways, depending on where, where we are. And we're having failures and we're having wins and we're getting more and more attached or identified with all these experiences as soul. And then when you're, when a soul is in a physical incarnation on a planet, now you're also identified typically first with the body. I mean, it takes a few minutes to be even identified with soul at all, much less your original sparks of spirit, much less divine mother and divine father, much less the original creator. That's like the prodigal son and daughter journey home, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, wow. I forgot what I was going to ask. <laughs> It'll come back to me. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, when we look at these codes of union, and that's what my first book series coming out is, I've got a couple of the books here, I'll show you in a minute. But, you know, we're looking at the perspective of Divine Mother, Divine Father and Source on this creation and on us, on who we are, on how we create, and on what reality really is, and how it, how it is different than we perceive a, we really have been convinced that it's very, very solid and real and even the physicists now are realizing that it's made more of space than anything else with a little bit of pattern in it and every and the energy healers and the and the physicists are starting you know the, the energy healers and spiritual healers have known it for a long time you know and the wizards and the mystics mm -hmm. reality is not what it seems you know everything is not as it seems that's one of those kind of cliches but it's true it's like the world that we see, that's why some people call it Maya or illusion, because it, it's not so much that it's not real as that our perception of it makes it be something more than what it is. And, and uh -huh. it's very, very malleable and based on our own thought vibrations and frequencies and the amount of chi and energy that we bring to, to the, the change or the trying to change or define or even create something new. Does that make sense? Yes. The whole thing's fairly complex though. <laughs> well, I'm going to break it down in a way that might make it a little simpler to understand. Um, okay. and you can tell me if it worked or not. <laughs> so, um, so you know how psychics can tell sometimes what might happen in the future and sometimes they're dead on and sometimes they're not quite right. Right. And, um, you know, that's because what psychics are doing is they're reading the possible future, the probable future, or the crystallized future. But all psychics might not know which one they're reading. And they might not even know that there's those three distinctions. So they might look at something that's a possible future and think it's actually happening. But depending on what a person does with a possible future, it could change trajectory. Yes. And if you, if you put a lot more thought towards a possible future, now it's going to become probable. Like it's probably going to have accumulated enough mojo energy stardust around it to show up in a physical form. Mm -hmm. um, and if you put even more energy into now it's crystallized. Now, unless you have some big intervention, like getting your whole you know, community to pray for a new <laughs> direction or, you know, um, really doing reality creation work every day and very diligently redirecting your thoughts and the energy on a creation and taking your mind off of that crystallized creation, that is going to happen. So it's not impossible. It's just very challenging to try to change it. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, it's sort of a spectrum. So those are three things on a spectrum. And the closer you get to its manifestation, the harder it is to change it. And so that is based on our connection with source, with the creator, our oneness that we were talking about before, our at one with the original source means that we're endowed with all of those aspects of the creator, our thinking, our speech, our feelings, our imagination, um, all of those put out a frequency with a pattern attached to it that starts summoning that thing to us. And so you can liken that to magic, you know, okay. you can liken that to the words of power or spells, ancient mm -hmm. spells. You know, if you spell 
out a sentence, now you get to live through it, right? <laughs> so it's even embedded in our language and words are for that purpose of creating. That's what they're for. We just didn't realize that. We weren't taught that. We forgot that. And now we're speaking out all kinds of things, including talking a lot about what we don't want. And we're creating, casting spells all over the place that we then get to live through as a sentence, but we don't necessarily want to, nor would we want to, if we realized the power we had, we would probably do something different. We'd probably then, start talking differently, wouldn't we? And we would realize what they meant when they said, you know, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. And then of course the, the sort of, uh, what do you want? The little devil on your shoulder says, have no fun. He tags that one on there because he's trying to trick you into thinking that speaking about whatever you want, and talking bad about people and you know talking negative is 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 more fun right but really that's not that's a trick <laughs> that pesky guy off your shoulder yeah shut up over there you know and start <laughs> you know, realizing that we're we're creating with our words and our thoughts and our actions mm -hmm, and our feelings and that, that that's been going on for a very long time the reason why so, it, so in the light of that, why can't we just speak something and bam, it appears in front of us, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? And there are people who can do that. Like there are people who are advanced and have had training and can do those types of things. But the regular mainstream guys, we don't know how to do that. We're just starting to get on the edge of manifesting over a period of time. And so I have enough experience with it to know that it works when we work it. And it kind of depends on how much contrary belief and detritus and debris and compilation of soul, you know, that you have in there that's against what you want to create. Because if you've lived lifetime after lifetime in poverty, it's going to be more difficult to create wealth this time around because your pattern says the opposite of what you're stating that you want. And, and how, how much uh, do you think the media and your exposure to the media programs a lot that's, what that's I the thought. other level there's four levels there's our soul level we just talked about there's the cultural level that you just talked about cultural conditioning uh -huh. a lot of which is intention they don't call it programming for nothing right right <laughs> so hi we have a viewer who joined us hello viewer welcome <laughs> And so we're just talking about uh, the different levels of how we create through compounded momentum. And one is um, the level of soul and its experiences, its accumulations of what we call karma and some scaric residue. And then there's the cultural conditioning of, of the mainstream media and the general milieu of the culture and those thought forms that it's impregnating with us, us with, especially when we're little and then continually when we're watching TV or listening to the radio or watching the news or even reading the feeds on Facebook, you know, it's mm -hmm. like those are all programming us with words and thoughts all the time that we're picking up on consciously or subconsciously. And then, um, you know, another level is our ancestral level. Our ancestors lived certain patterns and passed them on. That's why they say the sins of the forefathers shall be revisited unto the children for seven generations. Mm -hmm. And that's why the native Americans say, seven generations you got to think about seven generations ahead with your actions because you're affecting them and and you know we there can be effects further back but that seven generation thing is sort of like a you're really you're really still experiencing some of the things that your seven generation ago forebears set into motion you're you're gonna be and sin of course means missing the mark it you know it's like the original meaning is wherever your ancestors were missing the mark of living a truly prosperous, harmonious, positive, healthy, happy life, loving each other and knowing that they're at one with spirit, right? That's the ideal. That's the will of God for us, that goodness, that benefit, that beneficence. And, and but anywhere that they got missed the mark and they started fighting or having traumas or not being able to overcome them or having difficulties and compounding them further. Now you're going off into a different tangent and all of a sudden there's this reality creation happening in your life that's based more on the, the missing the mark than on the good stuff. And then that gets passed on into your parents eventually. Then, then the fourth level is your parents and how they conditioned you or whatever your early upbringing was, whether it was with your birth parents or other parents or other people, 
and your siblings in that home environment early on because we're in delta we we're like little seriously like physiologically our brains are like sponges at that time and mm -hmm. there's a purpose for that if the culture is healthy right if the people are healthy now you're gonna um it's actually a healthy thing to soak up all the good stuff and learn how to navigate and there's a lot of benefit from doing that because we learn how to become integrated with the culture we adopt this as our experience of reality and now we can integrate now we can understand and navigate what's going on in our world but it, it doesn't have a filter against mom and dad fighting or having health issues or having financial issues you know we're going to soak up all that stuff too and a lot of them get stuck in there as frozen traumas because if we don't understand why it's happening and we can't process it and it was scary a lot of times it'll freeze inside our emotional body so when we go back to do these clearings a lot of times we'll encounter a frozen energy kind of have to melt it and get to what was the sentiment underneath it that needs to finally be resolved and healed so that you can move on and the other thing that we do at that young age is we make conclusions we experience these things, these things and then instead of seeing it as the objective God being that we are, we think of ourselves as a little human being and wonder why we're so, why, why we're worthy of getting this bad experience or what we did wrong. Mm -hmm. We make it about us. And mm -hmm. so now on top of the frozen energy, there's this belief that you did something wrong, that you're a bad person, that you're, you know, so on and so forth that mm -hmm. accumulates. And, and then because of the nature of how we create, now those patterns are running in our subconscious processor and what do they do? They don't have any choice but to go out there and find more like them and bring them back to us because it doesn't, we don't have an off switch to creation. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> now, have they discovered ways to do that though, to delete <laughs> programs and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a lot of people working on that including myself. I mean, the healing technologies and tools and techniques that I've, either been taught directly or received downloads from transmissions from source and the guides or you know made up myself and the combination of all this work coming through from this 30 years of experience that's exactly what we're doing we're getting in there and changing what's in there by mercy and grace like because if you think about a culture looping over time with this there's no way even once we realize it if those patterns are so ingrained and literally in the, in the neural pathways of the brain, it's practically impossible for somebody to break three, free, you know, without some intervention from higher, <laughs> higher beings who know how to clear that stuff. Yes. That's where the celestial rays that I work with come in, that's where, you know, these very powerful, what I would call dispensations, like the violet flame is a good example of one. And I do use that occasionally, and I have some other ones as well, like the, um, you know, a few others, celestial selenite and the platinum ray, diamond ray. You know, these these different energies are very strong, and not everybody is ready to wield them. It's sort of a process of learning that they will help dismantle and dissolve this old debris, so that finally you can think straight, so to speak. You that would be wonderful because I decided <laughs> I trained as a psychotherapist and I have a master's in that but you know what talk therapy does not work no it's just I mean it's very very slow you can eventually okay. talk yourself out of the patterns but it might take 10 years where as some of this stuff can take 10 minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, that's, hey, why, you want? <laughs> that's why I decided to try to attract some shamans to me to I need to find out what's going on here that's really cool yeah well I did I do have a self-healing course available now at the transformation show and I can send you the link for that or even put it in a chat where I'm starting to teach people some of these self-healing tools and techniques because the world needs it it's like we, Why don't you put that link in the chat? Because some of our listeners, even later when it's on YouTube, might want to uh, know where that is. Yeah, let me let me go ahead and find that Can now. That. Um, yes, ma'am. I'll put that here right now. That's in the chat. And um, that's the self-healing. In fact, I think I can even... Uh, share my screen for a second if you like and just 
show it here. Where so, so this transformation show, I'm doing a few things oh, with them. There it is. Okay. Yeah, and here's this is the replay of that show, and then there are some ways to work with me down below. It's pretty long information about what's going on here, but you know people can go and check that out themselves. And there are ways to work with me on that down here that are special prices. So um, trying to make it as accessible as possible for for everyone. So this is you know self healing, clean your bio computer by deleting old programs. Learn how. And on this show, we spent about ninety look two hours. Do you know that there were about a dozen people that got massive healings on the show? It was really exciting. Cool. And, yeah. And so tomorrow I'm doing another one with them as well. And um, I have to get the link to help you sign up for that. I'll pick that up sometime before the end too, because I'm going to be doing a number of trainings through them that are, um, you know, going to be very reasonably priced. So. Great. Okay. Um, just out of curiosity, because I had a odd experience that I'm not quite sorted out. Okay. I'd like to see what you think was going on. Okay. I, uh, you remember when those Chilean miners were trapped in the mine? I vaguely remember that. There were 33 men trapped over a mile down in the earth for that 30 a few years? days. Was that a few years back? Yes. Okay. And I had the most amazing experience of my entire life during that time because huh. when they, uh, the whole world got activated to help them and they went down there with drill rigs and stuff and they drilled a shaft down to them and they made it bigger. It took them 30 days. They finally made it big enough for this little cage to go down in and they would put one man at a time and take them up this cage. So I'm watching this on the news and thinking, wow, that's a long ways down. But one night I started dreaming that I was down there and one by one I was going up the, up the chute with each man. Hmm. Nice. And I kept waking up and getting water and it took all night all night this happened cool what what was going on well it sounds like you're you know you were being one of their angels you're being one of their spirit guides and also it's interesting me to me that it was 33 do you remember what kind of mine it was it was no, I don't remember that. Okay, because that number 33 has some significance in the sense that it's very symbolic to us, you know. It's, oh, really? Yeah, and so being stuck in a mine and the, you know, it reminds me of the ancient gold mines that we, that our ancestors were very involved with uh, as slaves. And that's uh -huh. a whole alternate history of the world with the, um, with the, uh, star beings who came here and kind of monkeyed around with homo erectus to create a slave race for itself to mine gold mine gold yeah and so so 33 men stuck in a mine is kind of symbolic to a rated passage that we're going through right now coming up out of the stuck history of of our slavery and our wow, past. oh yeah it is huh it's almost bringing me in motion as i say that it's interesting i'm I'm feeling that. And, and for you, it sounds like in, in helping in your sleep time, in your dream time, going and helping each one of those men out, it's like you're doing massive energy work and energy clearing, supporting those men to A, believe that they can ascend out of that mine mm -hmm. and, and, and literally physically lend your energy to, to the crew that's helping lift them out. So it sounds like you were an energy healer. Um, you know, you were doing some support angel work to specifically help those men and who knows what your connection, maybe you knew them in a past life, you know, maybe well, that's the other thing I got stuck in. I don't even know anyone in Chile. Right. Have never had any attraction to Chile. <laughs> what? You know, I couldn't, I think it had to do with your tracking of the event and, and that you had a, a compassion for them and you had a strong desire to help. And, you know, and then, so you, you just joined the team and etherically, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
So that's one of the way, that's like another dimension when you're doing those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like we, um, when we, we can change anything. Okay. We are so powerful when we finally get enough of the detritus and debris cleared out of our subconscious mind. And we are, you know, operating at our full functioning of our creative abilities. We can change the scape of the planet so fast it'll make our head spin, but we're, we're just on the verge of even grokking that possibility for our own lives, much less how it applies to the planet. But that's a lot of what I've been bringing in is how do we do this visionary stewardship, this reality creation, and these books are in service to helping us wake up to that. One of them is called Fall in Love with the Beloved Within. That one is Source Speaks. Okay. And the transmission from source. And this one is unlocked and unleashed. The God within you, divine father speaks. And the, the other one I was mentioning earlier in the show is the divine mother speaks. And basically these, these counterparts of ours in the ultimate reality, divine mother, divine father, and source are helping us understand who we are and how we create, how we got here and how this detritus and debris in the subconscious that we call compounded momentum has sort of, you know, for lack of a better word, jacked up our ability to deliberately create to where we're creating from these old subconscious patterns. So if we don't know there's any junk in the trunk, we don't know to clean it out. So yeah. what the reality, the energy clearing and the spiritual healing, you know, whether it's Reiki or healing touch or, you know, quantum touch or soul clearing or this celestial rays that I work with or any combination of whatever healing work we're all doing, we are cleaning the detritus and debris out of the subconscious mind so that we can now steer the ship of our lives and our planet in directions of our own choosing. Because wow. what we think creates when we are focused enough on it, when we are not attached, and we are, when we are non-resistant. Okay? So if we're attached or resistant, now it's going to slow down the creation. And being attached means we, we want it so badly that we're thinking about it all the time and wondering why it's not there, <laughs> which means our thoughts are going in the direction of it being not there, uh -huh. leading to more of that. Or if we're resistant, that means we have beliefs that are in the way of believing it could be true, or we, you know, or we have experiences that frightened us that make us afraid of the thing we want, even though we really want it. You know, if your subconscious mind believes it's going to hurt you, then it's not going to deliver it to you. So we so got to go in there and speak that out. Those ones that you can't consciously control. What's that? Those last two, attachment and resistance, you can't consciously even know they're there, can you? Yes. Yes? You can. And it just takes a little doing, but that's, you know, it's 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 challenging of enough the thing to do that there are specialists like myself and others who focus just on doing that you know it's not the only thing i do but it's like we spend a lot of time clearing energy and clearing patterns and getting to the root core of what is the belief in the way and so once we can get in there and determine what it is now it can be cleared it and and once you realize that you're attached now you can work on letting go of your attachment do you see what I'm saying? It's like, but it is a process of awareness. You can call it spiritual healing or shamanic help, or you can call it, you know, um, energy clearing. In, whatever you call it, what we're doing is getting in there and rewiring the subconscious so that it actually could be in alignment with that higher will, that will of goodness for you. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. The other thing that crops up sometimes is uh, what I call a, mor a morbid attachment. So in other words, sometimes we're attached to th a certain sickness or a certain negative habit. And I call it morbid because it's nothing you would want to be attached to. <laughs> <laughs> you're just used to it. You're so used to it that your mind has identified yourself with this thing and so now you think you own it you're just like my illness or my this uh -huh. and, and you're you're so convinced that it's part of reality that you're you know that it creates this morbid attachment that you got to be able to clear that so you know it's a little bit of detective work to go in and help people figure out exactly what's going on. <laughs> i've tried to figure out i have 
chronic pain that I've had for 10 years. And I've tried to figure out, do I have a morbid attachment to this? Because I've arranged my whole life around it. Mm -hmm. I have to have places to lie down everywhere I go. <laughs> and I'm thinking, that's crazy. Well, that's a nice thing to create for yourself. Places to lie down everywhere you go. <laughs> I have hammocks everywhere. <laughs> I kind of like that creation, though. It's not a bad thing. I, I hope you don't have to be in pain to keep enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I keep telling myself. Okay, I don't have to be attached to this to, to still have the hammocks. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I just well, I would love to have you join the Traveling Shamans and come to Grand Junction. Oh, wow. When is that taking place? Well... The Traveling Shamans is a group of shamans who, it's kind of like Shamans Without Borders. You um, commit to traveling to some place um, on a regular basis, like maybe once every two years, to a place where they're isolated and need shamanic services, but have no chance of, they have no shaman. I see. Right. Well, I do. So more and more, I want to find ways to get this information to people, whether they have resources or not. Like to me, it doesn't make sense that some people in the world have money and therefore they can get the help they need. And then the other people don't and can't. And so, you know, still living in the world, I've been looking to determine how I could help people authentically and, and keep my balance in the world while also extending to those who don't have resources yet. And so my, my thoughts that I'm working with right now are every time someone hires me for a full price session, I offer a session to someone who is destitute. And uh, so that's one way that I'm working right now. Wonderful. Well, I'll talk mm -hmm. to you about the traveling shamans later, but um, I'd like to give you a chance to let everybody know where they can find contact you. Okay. Um, because we we're getting we run out of time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No worries. Thank you for asking. Um, yeah, it's been really fun having this chat with you. I really enjoy. I have been enjoying it. And uh, <laughs> so thank you for inviting me. It's it's fun to explore these topics together. And my main website is shirea.com, which I'll put in the chat here in just a moment. That's C-H-I-R-E-Y-A.com. And um, so you can see, you can learn, you can contact me for a quick chat on how I can help you right there through the website. And then also... I put a link in the chat to the transformation show. That's the self healing show. If people are interested in learning, hearing me work with others, I've did about 12 sessions, little mini sessions on that show. And it was extremely powerful. Like people getting healings left and right. Just it's that's, it can demonstrate to you how quickly this can work to get people relief. It doesn't mean every single problem is going to be solved in 10 minutes. It just means the work is fast when we really start get in there. And when we have somebody who's ready to heal, you got to be ready yeah. you know, to heal. So that's really fun. And then there's another one I'm doing tomorrow, which you guys all might want to listen to on the transformation show around energy clearing for your home and for spaces. And this can help if you're trying to sell your home, if you're trying to improve relationships in the home, or if you're dealing with some kind of health issue, or if you just have a creepy feeling when you get in your home or something doesn't feel right in your life in general, a lot of times it can be the energy in the home itself and it could be ancient energy or it could be new energy. Um, so we're going to be working on clearing that on the transformation show tomorrow, which is really, really cool. And so why don't I, and what, what time, time will that be? That's at three o'clock mountain time. And three. yeah. Um, okay. and here's my website. Do do oops. Sharia.com. Oh, are you here in Colorado? I am. I'm in Boulder, Colorado. So I'm happy to work with people in person in, um, in Boulder um, if they want. That's always fun for me. I love, I, you know, I work on the phone and on Zoom all the time or Skype, uh, but it's always a treat to be able to be with somebody in person. Um, the work is just as powerful either way. It's just, it can be really comforting to be in per person if that's available. And so, you know, the reason that it can work long distance is because once again of our multidimensional holographic nature, just like you were 
helping those men in the mines, you know, we can, we, a lot of us, you might've noticed a lot of prayer work going on during the hurricanes. That's that same kind of angelic support that we can give to our planet as it goes through our ships. We are meant to be taking a lead on um, changing negative weather patterns, healing each other, bringing peace and balance to the planet on all levels. You might've heard of weather wizardry or weather working. You know, this is who we are. We have the capacity to change realities and to create new ones, new experiences of reality for ourselves. Um, and so more and more, we're just uncovering the detritus and debris of the past so that we can discover the truth of us, you know, which is that the creator is within us. And, you know, there is a God within you that has abilities and such as great masters like Jesus even said, he said, ye shall do greater things than I. And he said, you know, he said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. <laughs> he said, ye are gods. So, so that's overlooked often. These older teachings and these teachings of the masters like Buddha and Jesus are, and others, they're pointing us to the truth of us. They're pointing us to our expanded abilities. And now is the time when we are meant to step up as stewards of the planet, as stewards of our lives and make great change through through understanding and so that's what my work is in service to wonderful <laughs> i am so glad we found you thank you oh. yeah that was really fun i think i found you on simbi which is another wonderful place to... oh it is <laughs> simbi.com where you can barter for all kinds of things mm -hmm. it's really great and Vivian mentioned slim spurling tools. What is, what is that? Do you know? Slim spurling. I've heard that name before. Hey, yeah, I put I put my my phone, my uh, mic on. Hi guys, I'm not putting the video because like I'm like really kind of crappy, but <laughs> <no free today. laughs> that's why um, I put it in the picture. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. Uh, it's a, it's light life uh, technology. It's slim spurling. If you don't know about it, you should look at it up. It really helps. I mean, you put intention and everything, but they're kind of like this, um, you know, this little, uh, they're bronze, I guess, or they're copper, bronze, gold, and they're this little, you know, energy tools, these little balls with spirals and little balls in them. And then you put this, uh, this energy through it, this, the sounds, and you put intention. And so you can put it on a map. You can put it in a, you can change the environment around you. I mean, it takes a while, but I, like I've been putting one in my neighborhood because there was all these people fighting, suing each other and all that stuff. And I've started it, you know, using this energy tools and slowly it's, you know, people are like making up, dropping the lawsuit, finding other ways, you know, the plants get better, the birds get better. I mean, I just love working like that because it really has a very soothing, you know, subtle and slow effect, but it, it does affect things and also uh, affect things. Uh, it also helps with the uh, chemtrails and, uh, you know, clear the air around us. And, you yeah. know, there's so much chemicals in the air right now. And I'm in Texas, so it's worse here. Oh, it's yeah, there's lots and lots of tools like that available now. Yeah. I'll yeah. definitely yeah. check out Slim. My friend Ken Rolla has a lot of them on Fresh and Alive. And, you know, there's tons of different people who are bringing in technologies that sort of support and those are all really great to, I love playing with those. And also just to remember that we have the capacity actually to do all of that inside of ourselves. Yeah. 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 Kind inside of of inside the heart. Without, yeah. without any kind of tool. Um, I'm sorry <laughs> but that, but that's, that's everybody, cool. but I really need to uh, oh. close the show now. Thank you so much. And um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thanks Bye. Vivian. Bye. 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 Bye.